<clears throat> hey guys, we're going to start a uh, new unit here, unit four, and we're going to start that unit by talking first about simulation. So let's talk quickly about randomness. We found, uh, we did some random assignment when we did simple random samples earlier in the year, but I wanted to make a quick note. Um, a couple things exist when things are random. Uh, we use the word random a lot, and oftentimes we're not really using it in a statistical sense. Um, the first thing is that you can't predict the outcome before it happens. And the second thing would be that there should be some sort of fairness that applies in the scenario uh, so that if there are a set of outcomes, they're equally as likely to occur. Uh, one really good example would be rolling a die. Um, when you roll a die, there are six sides. Each side is equally likely to, to land on top. Um, you can't predict which side is going to land on top before you throw it, but each of them has the same likelihood of coming out on top. So if we look at these three quick scenarios uh, to decide whether or not they're random, uh, the first one would be flipping a coin to decide who takes out the trash. That would be random because before we flip the coin, we wouldn't know, uh, you know, let's say either myself or my wife, who would take out the trash. You flip a coin, one of us is heads, the other's tails. Uh, we don't know who it's going to be, but there's an equal chance of either of us having to take out the trash. Uh, friend asking you to quickly name a professional sports team. Uh, you might say, hey, pick one at random, but it's not going to be random. Each of us uh, has a certain amount of knowledge about professional sports teams. Some of us have favorites. You're more likely to say a name that you uh, research a lot or follow heavily, so that's not random. Uh, if you were to draw names out of a hat to decide your roommate in a dorm, that would be random because you wouldn't know who your roommate was before you selected, and you'd have uh, an equally likely chance of getting anybody as your roommate. So just a quick talk uh, about randomness, because we're going to talk about randomness in this unit. So one thing we didn't talk about when we talked about collecting data was simulation. Simulation is another way to collect data. And it's, as it says here, it's mimicking reality. So we can't, we're not really performing a task. We're trying to uh, replicate it in some way. And when we do that, uh, just a definition here of a trial, each time we attain a simulated answer to our question. And this is going to become uh, much more clear when we do an example. Uh, so just a quick note, too, on simulations. You know, we have some simu simulators that we are used to. Um, flight simulators, for example, you can simulate flying a plane um, without actually flying a plane. And that's a good way to practice before you actually get behind uh, in the cockpit of a plane and you're, you're in a dangerous situation and you don't know what you're doing. Uh, ours is a little bit less serious than that, so if you read this question, uh, we're talking about a cereal manufacturer and they're trying to hook people into buying their cereal, so they put pictures of famous athletes in there hoping that people will want to collect them and so they'll buy their cereal. Uh, some important information in this problem is that 20% have LeBron on them. 30% have Danica Patrick, who, for those of you who don't know, is a race car driver. And the rest have Serena Williams. So the rest being 50% have Serena Williams, super famous, super successful tennis player. And uh, we're looking to see how many boxes of cereal you'd have to buy uh, in order to complete the set, get all three. Now, you probably wouldn't want to just go keep buying a bunch of boxes of cereal at the store. That could get costly. It would be a huge waste of cereal unless you ate it, so we can simulate that. In this example, a trial is getting all three pictures. So that's what we want to happen. So we would say we've completed a trial when we've gotten the boxes of cereal with all three pictures in them. 
an outcome in this example is the number of boxes you'd have to purchase and then the number of boxes you'd have to buy in order to complete a trial, in order to get all three pictures. So let's talk about building a simulation uh, and, and specifically we're going to build a simulation for this scenario. So the first thing you want to think about is what component is being repeated and that would be opening boxes of cereal. That's the thing we're going to have to do multiple times in order to get the three pictures. Two is how are you going to model your outcome? So we're going to use random digits to model our outcome uh, because there are 10 digits. Uh, we can break those down into percentages. LeBron had a 20% or 20 percent of the serial boxes had LeBron in them. So we'll just use two of those digits and we can choose zero and one to represent LeBron. Danica was on 30 percent of the boxes so we'll give her three digits and Serena was in 50 percent of the boxes so we'll give her five digits. It doesn't matter that LeBron was zero and one it was just nice to break them down in order. So in order to combine these components, opening each box of cereal, um, we're going to keep doing that until we get all three pictures. So if we actually open the cereal, we would keep opening the boxes until we got all three pictures. In this case, we're going to keep using our calculator to get random digits until we get all three pictures. So real quick, to show you how to get random digits, um, you can go to the math key, over to probability, down to random integer. We're doing random integers, and I'm just going to say go from 0, comma, to 9. And then I could keep hitting enter, and it's going to keep giving me random integers between 0 and 9. And so let's see, our first serial box we opened was a 6, so that's a Serena. A nine, that's a Serena. Six, another Serena. A three, we got a Danica. And a zero, we got a LeBron. So it took us one, two, three, four, five. Oops, I think I went too far. It took us five boxes of cereal to get all three pictures. So this was one trial and it took five boxes of cereal, that was an outcome, and we would have had all three pictures. We need to know what the response variable is. What is it that we're trying to uh, find out about? And in this case, the number of boxes it takes to get all three pictures. So in our first trial, it took us five boxes. You need to run several trials. So we wouldn't want to just have run that quick trial, uh, one quick simulation of opening boxes and say that, okay, it's going to take you five boxes to get all three. All right, we would have to repeat this many, many times. The more times you repeat it, the better the information you are going to have. Uh, we want to collect and summarize the results, so we'd want to take many trials. Again, a trial is getting all three pictures in this case. So we would want to look at the number of boxes during each trial it took us to get all three pictures and we could summarize that those results and that's what we've been doing for the last several weeks. Uh, we can create a data display, we can uh, describe its shape, its center, its spread, if there are any outliers, And then lastly, we would want to make a conclusion. So we would want to draw a conclusion about this simulation in context. So we would want to talk about the number of boxes you'd have to open to get all three athletes' pictures. So let's do an example. I'm just setting up how we would use random numbers. Um, the American College of OBGYNs says that out of every 100 babies born in the United States, three have some kind of major birth defect. So would we, want, we would want to sim, run a simulation uh, to see 
how many babies would be born before there was a birth defect. So we would assign two digit, two digit numbers from uh, 0 to 99. Birth defects would be given uh, double 0, 0, 1, and 0, 2, which on our calculator are just going to look like 0, 1, and 2. And the no birth defects would go from 3 to 99. Even though I go to 99, I still have 100 integers. So I can go on here, math, probability, random integer, Sorry, I'm a little quick with my clicks. Then an integer from, I'm going to say 0, 0 to 99. So I'm dealing with two digit numbers, and then I could run a simulation. So I want you to try this one. I just want you to sort of lay out how you would use integers to simulate this scenario. So here we have 10% of males who have some color perception defect. And so that means 10 out of every 100 will have a defect. So we're going to assign two-digit two digit number again. Our males with color perception defect are going to get 10 integers. We'll start from 00, zero to zero 09. And then our no color perception is going to get from 10 to 99. We could again set, set that same thing up, doing math, probability, random integers from 00 to 99. And then we could run our simulation. Okay, so it's important to point out for these ones, I haven't asked you a question about this. So when we, when we run uh, those random numbers, we don't really know what we're supposed to be looking for. Uh, maybe the question was, how many, uh, how many males were born before one was born with a color perception defect? Okay, for this, this question, we're just looking, how would we assign the numbers? A big, big important thing to, dis to discuss, when you're drawing a conclusion about a simulation you've run, um, you can't claim that it's reality. Okay, so you can't confuse uh, what you've gotten by just running random integers and claim that that's what really actually happened. You need to say that in a simulation or simulation results gave you, okay, so you have to, you can't claim that, hey, this actually happened. Um, I actually opened five boxes of cereal and I got all three pictures. We didn't do that. We plugged numbers into a calculator. And uh, again, it's really important to run a large number of trials. Uh, in our practice, we'll probably run 10 to 20 because that's reasonable to do in class. But the more, the better. Okay, and I'll put this up on the board. You're good to go. Ask me questions if you have any questions about these notes and jump in on some practice.